you will share your life with your partner, but not necessarily the truth about money and finances. For most couples, dealing with money, let alone talking about money, is not the most natural thing and not the easiest thing to do. And that's a shame, because that can put a big strain in a relationship and money worries, money issues are the most common reason for why couples separate. It doesn't have to be that way. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I can help you put you on the same financial page. When things are good, they will be good. And when things get tough, it becomes more bearable. Hi folks, welcome to another weekly episode of I Hate Numbers, the channel that's there to improve your money mindset, increase your financial awareness, help you and your business make more money, save tax and save time. Let's crack on with the video. In this video, I'm going to outline six tips that's going to help you and your partner deal with money in a much more effective. Tip number one, discuss your money monsters. Getting together the first time before you're getting married, before you're moving in together here, and disclosing what your financial history is, is really important. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's easy to do it at the beginning of a relationship before you tie the knot, before you actually become a solidified couple. So debts that you may have accrued, your investments, uh, income, your income sources, perhaps obligations that you've tied into for your family, for an ex-partner or whatever, you need to bring those into the mix. Tip number two, have empathy for your partner. So most discussions, most heated discussions and arguments about money is about a temperament as opposed to the actual financial transaction itself. And it could be those temperaments colliding that's causing that friction. You may see your partner uh, spending money too recklessly, too foolishly in your eyes. Well, it may be as much to do with your approach to it. It could be because of your own background. It could be because of your partner's background. So if you don't understand what's underlying the behaviour, the action here, that could make the conversation very strained and it could make the relationship very strained. Tip number three, have goals in common as a couple. Most couples don't necessarily talk about money in terms of the long, the big picture, you know, what their aspirations are in terms of retirement, whether it's in terms of saving, you want to save up for a, a household item, going on holiday, just stability, whatever that is, what are your goals as a couple? Have that conversation maybe once or twice a year and make sure that your money behavior aligns with reaching those goals. Tip number four is that wonderful dreaded word for some people, the B word, which is budgeting. The vast majority of households do not budget. Some people see budgeting as a straitjacket, as a restriction on what they wish to do, but it's an important discipline to adopt. Budgeting can include provisions for where you've got money for treats, where you've got money for saving up for certain items, but it's saying our financial route map together as a household is such, this is how we're gonna meet our end goals. And budgeting for your household enables you to challenge those unnecessary costs, to look at in terms of more certainty and lessen that uh, sense of anxiety and give you a greater sense of control of your future. So household, personal budgeting, it's an absolute must. Tip number five, don't hide the biggies from your partner. Now you may have separate bank accounts, you may have a bank account that's in common. When you make purchases, we're not talking about micromanaging each other's purchases, those treats that you've got, those little indulgences that you have, the presents you're going to buy. It's about the biggies, the credit cards that you're taking out, the loans that you've taken out without disclosing that to your partner. Do not hide those biggies. You do not want them to come out of the woodwork and bite yourself in the arse. And lastly, tip number six, is the language that you're adopting when you have those conversations about money with your partner. Using those negative, Dismissive words like reckless, irresponsible, is likely to get make somebody very defensive as opposed to feeling comfortable to having those conversations with you. If you don't feel comfortable to have that big embracing conversation, then start it off in micro steps. You use those negative words, attack words here, uh, are not gonna really advance the dial too much. Folks, I hope you found this video useful. I'd love it if you could share it with those who you feel would benefit from that. If you've got any comments or tips on how you would manage money in a relationship, I'd love to hear from you. Until next week, happy money conversations.